Orion is getting ready to launch. My name is Kelly Smith, and I work on navigation and guidance for Orion. Orion is NASA's next generation spacecraft. Built with versatility in mind, it can take astronauts deeper into space than we've ever gone before, to an asteroid, or even onto Mars. For these missions, Orion has to be one tough spacecraft, withstanding high speeds, searing temperatures, and extreme radiation. Before we can send astronauts into space on Orion, we have to test all of its systems. And there's only one way to know if we got it right. Fly it in space. For Orion's first flight, no astronauts will be aboard. The spacecraft is loaded with sensors to record and measure all aspects of the flight in every detail. It all begins with launch aboard a Delta IV heavy rocket. As it punches into Earth orbit, Orion will jettison its launch abort system. The abort system is a safety feature designed to pull Orion and its crew out of danger if there were a problem with the rocket during ascent. Orion's journey is just beginning. As the spacecraft and the upper stage begin their first lap around Earth, Mission Control in Houston is monitoring the progress of the flight. Orion's over 100 miles up and going about 17,000 miles per hour. Just as it passes over the Indian Ocean, we lose communication. This is expected. The communications link we have through satellites to Orion is momentarily lost. But Orion continues to receive and process data. Its computers can handle 480 million instructions per second. Imagine you are traveling with Orion as the flight test continues. One orbit completed. Time to go. The upper stage of the rocket fires again. Like the setup for a roller coaster ride, this is the big climb we've been waiting for. We are headed 3,600 miles above Earth. 15 times higher from the planet than the International Space Station. As we get further away from Earth, we'll pass through the Van Allen belts, an area of dangerous radiation. Hey everybody, it's Krusty Christofferson coming at you live from our studio. How's it going, folks? Well, here's a NASA engineer uh, basically admitting that uh, they have to come up with new technology in order to get past the Van Allen belts uh, that uh, contain uh, massive amounts of radiation. And uh, this would uh, totally uh, prove that the, the moon missions were faked. And, uh, of course, anybody with a functioning brain knows that's true that they, they faked the moon missions and uh, basically uh, recorded it on in a studio somewhere, some sound stage. And uh, you can see this guy right here is giving you the 777 order out of CAS code. He's writing it on the screen here. He's making a little squiggly line. But, of course, you can see that makes the three sevens. And I showed you earlier why I stopped it, how he, he's going to make three sets of uh, 777s. And it's 777, it, either way you go. For order out of chaos, the same code they use in all the hopes this stage events and fake news stories. So this whole idea that uh, man can go into outer space and uh, go wherever they want to go, and the, they have rocket ships to go to the moon, and they can go to Mars, and they're going to colonize Mars. It's all bullshit. This is all fakery. This is all done for profit. These are uh, very sneaky, crafty people, free, Freemasons, uh, just... Uh, creating a fake reality for you in order to uh, make money for them and their their family members basically the creating jobs for themselves that have uh, nice uh, benefits and pensions and everything else and salaries for them and uh, uh it's it's all deception by design and you can see uh when they showed this uh 
this rocket taking off. It almost looks like it's it's CGI, and uh, I have to believe maybe that's what all they did was give give you a CGI image of a rocket taking off. I mean, they, they claim that uh, this is witnessed by live spectators, but who knows who they let in there to see that. It could just be their little Freemasonic agent people to go in there and witness these takeoffs. And I've never witnessed it personally. I don't know anybody who's witnessed these rockets taking off. And I'm sure there'll be trolls that'll come on the page and make comments saying they know somebody that knows somebody that saw the rocket take off when it went to the moon and all this other nonsense. And you heard them say how uh, NASA loses contact with uh, their uh, spacecraft when it goes over the Indian Ocean. And how would that even be possible if satellites did exist the way we've been informed? And, of course, they probably don't. And the reason they lose contact with those uh, spacecraft is because there are no uh, satellites to cover that uh, area. And mo most of this or all of this uh, communication is being done through ground-based uh, uh, technology, uh, cell, cell towers, etc., and uh, different uh, output stations. I don't know exactly how they do it. I'm not technically... Uh, uh, up to date on how they're doing it, but uh, th there'd be no other reason to have all these cell phone towers all across the whole country every half mile or so if uh, the satellites were the were what were providing the uh, the cell phone service and the uh, the Wi-Fi of the internet. That's all radio waves. That's how they make the uh, the uh, computer uh, Wi-Fi internet connection. That's all based on radio technology. It's old technology, and uh, they. Uh, communicate across the uh, the oceans with cables laid under the ocean and that's how uh, the whole world is uh, communicating through ground-based technology and they may ba uh, bounce some of those uh, signals from the ground up and up into the air and bounce it off the uh, the uh, ionosphere or the uh, whatever it is that is up there the, the so-called dome that uh, everybody's all talking about all of a sudden but uh, this guy goes on to say how they're going to be able to get through the Van Allen belts, thus proving that they've never done it before. And uh, I just wanted to see how they how he gets this code in here. He's right in here. That's their bullshit. That's their jackpot code. He's letting you know that everything he's telling you is bullshit when he's putting that code on this page right here, 777. That's the same as saying you can disregard everything I'm saying as being bullshit from here on forward. And there you go. Radiation like this could harm the guidance systems, onboard computers, or other electronics on Orion. Naturally, we have to pass through this danger zone twice, once up and once back. But Orion has protection. Shielding will be put to the test as the vehicle cuts through the waves of radiation. Sensors aboard will record radiation levels for scientists to study. We must solve these challenges before we send people through this region of space. For this we must solve this challenge before we send people through space. Well, I thought you solved it in 1969 when you went to the moon. Obviously, you lied then and you lie constantly. And NASA is all just a big deception and a bunch of BS. This flight, it's time to head home. The upper stage of the rocket triggers separation. Orion's jets fire to turn it into the proper position to re-enter Earth's atmosphere. No matter what happens now, we're coming in. 75 miles above Earth, the spacecraft enters the atmosphere. Things happen quickly. We're now traveling more than 20,000 miles per hour. Air particles pushed out of the way heat up. An envelope of hot plasma surrounds the vehicle as it plummets towards Earth. The plasma reaches temperatures of 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit, almost twice as hot. Does any of that look real to anybody, or is this like a cartoon? It looks like a cartoon to me, and that's exactly everything they're telling you is just cartoon bullshit nonsense never happened never will happen they can't go into outer space they just cannot carry enough fuel with them to continue to go far enough as they claim they're going and it would just not be possible for a rocket to take off and to keep on traveling and have an, have enough uh, fuel with it to keep uh, propelling itself and still be able to take off uh, from the ground and that's the conundrum they're in and they'll never solve that it's molten lava this may be the most dangerous part of the flight Mission Control is monitoring all the data from the spacecraft, and then we lose communication again. No data can penetrate the plasma. Orion is on its own. Orion is inside a fireball. 
Onboard systems ignite jets to keep the ship pointed correctly, so the specially constructed heat shield takes the full brunt of the inferno. This is the largest heat shield of its kind ever made. Orion's computers command the spacecraft to bank like an airplane, keeping a precise path to the landing site. Even though we've slowed from 20,000 miles per hour to about 300 miles per hour, we're still traveling amazingly fast. We must slow down to safely land in the ocean. Luckily, we have parachutes. Specially designed for Orion, the parachutes help us hit the brakes, but not too quickly. One day people will be aboard, so deceleration must happen in stages to keep things comfortable for the crew. The forward bay cover jettisons. Two drogue chutes deploy and slow the returning spacecraft down to 175 miles per hour. Then, the three main parachutes open. Once fully engaged, this canopy would cover an American football field. It takes parachutes this size and strength to slow our descent to 20 miles per hour. And then, splashdown. For this first flight, we won't have astronauts inside, but we still have some very precious cargo. The flight data from this mission is stored inside the Orion spacecraft. While our flight might be over, there is still a lot of work to do. Onboard sensors recorded every detail, from launch, to flying in space, to re-entry, to landing. Flight tests are difficult and complex, but they give us confidence that the systems we have designed work under real flight conditions. It's great to be a part of this first space flight for Orion, and we're looking forward to beginning a new chapter in human space exploration. We'll pass so, through the Van Allen If you belts believe any of this bullshit, of you're basically going to be stuck in the maze forever. There you go. The guy has coded the story for you. All this bullshit about they're going to go uh, wherever they're going uh, through the Van Allen belt. Uh, they, they obviously have never passed through the Van Allen belt. And uh, there, there's a whole debate whether you can actually even go through the uh, the dome, the firmament, the, uh, the thing that keeps the atmosphere contained around the earth in a little bubble so to speak and uh, th there's a uh, been theorized that you cannot even uh, break through that uh, glass uh, glass dome that uh, surrounds us we're kind of like in a uh, in a uh, little uh, snow globe kind of a thing and uh, that's what keeps the atmosphere from just flying away and uh, they uh, they cannot go into outer space. This is just a boondoggle to take your tax dollars and uh, spend it on themselves. And that's what it is. It's 777, order out of chaos bullshit. And that's why that guy is writing that there. It's, it's not there by accident. It's coding this, whatever he's saying, for those who know what, what, he's, what he's doing. All right, folks. It's Christopher Christopherson signing out. You need to get out of the maze, people, and wake up. If you believe any of this is real, then uh, there's not much hope for you ever escaping their uh, maze of bullshit. You take care. Bye-bye.